hi everyone welcome back to my channel so as i have announced yesterday so uh, this is the weekend master class on aws rds service so i've curated this entire master class in such a way that you need not go and refer any other courses on A aws rds so i will be covering from the basics till advanced everything that is required to be a master of aws rds okay so first let us go through the content here so first we will be discussing about uh, the overview of databases in general so what are databases types of databases all those things we will be discussing there next we will be discussing about uh, databases on ec2 instance so why do you uh, need to run uh, databases on ec2 instance is there any other option to run your databases uh, from uh, other than running it on ec2 instance next we will be seeing the overview of rds instance and we will also uh, see how you can you know run your air databases on your ec2 instance and also how to create rds instance database instance and how to migrate the database that is already there on some server let us say uh, some uh, there are some uh, you know uh, databases that are already running on ec2 instance if you want to migrate it to rds how to do that from the, uh, scratch we will be doing that we will be speaking about high availability multi az architecture we will be looking into aws rds automatic backup snapshots and restore options and we'll also talk about read replicas and data security so these are the table of contents that we are going to discuss in this master class so everything we will have a detailed demo so if i speak about any topic in theory we will be going ahead into the aws console and see how we can do that okay so without wasting much time so you can skip to the video uh, content that you uh, want let's say you already know um, databases in general you can skip that part and go ahead and watch the one that you want okay so that is that is the reason why i have added table of content so first let us talk about the overview of databases so if we see overview of databases the first thing that comes to our mind is what is a database right so database is nothing but a system that stores and manages your data so it is just a system that stores and manages the data that you store okay so broadly we have divided this entire databases into two kinds one is relational and the other one is non relational so uh, previously from the industry people started calling relational as sql and non relational as no sql but sql is just structured query language it is just a language used to query the relational databases so people are using uh, you know SQL as a substitute for relational databases but that's okay so we'll also follow the same thing so in relational databases so there will be some relationship between the tables that we will be seeing in the example table uh, next slide so there will be some sort of relation between the tables that we create right now what is schema right so it is the structure in and between the tables of data is called as schema okay the next is no sql what is no sql so the full form or uh, the best way to define this is not one single thing that means anything that does not fit into your sql it is no sql right so these are the basic things that you need to know before starting your databases right so i hope i have covered databases in general here there are if i want to speak about you know databases uh, this master class will be too much lengthy but to understand rds these are the things that you require so i've curated in such a way that only things that are needed to understand rds i have added it okay so this is just an example of your relational database so what i have done is i have created two tables here one is 
for the human uh, it stores the human information the other one is storing the pet information okay so here we have four columns hid that means human id f name refers to first name l name last name age that is age okay so we have four rows one two three four and we have f name and uh, last name for all the people that i have added here and their corresponding ages so uh, in the similar way i have created another table with the pet id and the name of the pet along with the type whether it is a dog cat whatever you want right so it is having three columns and two rows so for all the tables there will be something called as primary key primary key is nothing but a, a column or a value which is unique across the entire table so here if you see hid is unique so you might ask here uh, f name and l name is also unique so why didn't you consider f name or l name as unique uh, or primary key so the reason is two or more person can have the same f name or l name or ages but human id that we define it is always you know uh, not repeated right so only one person will have human id as one the other one will have two three four let's say christiana fox there is one more person with the name christiana fox after five we will add but the hid for him would be five then this uh, so f name l name and ages is similar but human id is unique so that is why we have identified hid as our primary key so primary key will be unique across this table okay in the similar way i've done the same thing for uh, you know pet table also here also uh, we can have a dog uh, with the name charlie again but the pet id will be unique right so that is why i've identified so the primary key as pet id so in the similar way you can think of another example employees in an organization their salary their first name last name along with their employee ids then in that scenario your employee id will be your primary key because two employees can have the same name and same salary but the employee id will be different right so that is why we choose primary key which is unique across the table so now if you see here in all the rows all the attributes has to have the value so that is one important thing here and we will define some relationship between the tables now if you see this table this is called as join table here i have defined some relationship between your hid and pet id so this is called as composite keys so hid is your human id and pid pet id is your uh, you know id of pets okay so if you see one is corresponding to one that means human one that is christiana fox is corresponding or she is owning she or he is owning the pet one which is one charlie so christiana fox is owning charlie like that i have defined so you can see the second person is owning the sony cat like that we have defined so this entire thing the table that you see is called as table schemas and as already told relationship will be defined in advance itself so it is really difficult to uh, you know break that relationship or so if you want to modify that uh, relationship it is you know completely uh, you know difficult or it is impossible in some of the cases okay so this is about uh, this is just an example to make you understand what is a relational database so if you already know this topic please head over to rds directly okay so that's it i wanted to cover in this relational database example so let's move forward so the next thing is databases on your ec2 instances so you can have your databases running on ec2 instances so the architecture can be anything right so i've defined it in a clear way so whatever you are seeing on the screen you can use this architecture so people are using this architecture so they can be using other architecture too but this is the example that i am giving here 
so what is this uh, you have defined web server application and database what is this i cannot understand right so don't worry <clears throat> i will break it down here so in the industry so if you want uh, run if you want to run any application so you won't run only the application there will be corresponding web server and the databases that needs to store your you know informations of user for example let's say we are running amazon.com and for amazon.com it is a web server and an application right so we need both of them and we also need the databases to store our users and to store all the things that are displayed on our amazon.com site right so for that we use all three components so basically this entire thing that you are seeing web server application and database this these are called as three tier this is called as three tier architecture and you can run all the three components in the same ec2 instance itself but refrain from doing that so in the industry people do not recommend using this kind of architecture because if if your ec2 instance crashes or anything happens to your ec2 instance then you will be losing out database application and your web server right so this is involved with a great risk so if you're testing out something that is okay but in production uh, i don't see people using this kind of architecture right so then what else can be done so the other way around is to go with this architecture where you run application and web server on one ec2 instance and the database on another ec2 instance okay so then you will be you know uh, taking off some risk out of your bag right so here also there is a risk involved but you will be releasing some sort of risk out of your bag right so you can run your web server and application in one ec2 and the other one database in other ec2 instance and you can do one more thing you can place this uh, web server and application server in one availability zone so if you do not know what is availability zone and all please go ahead and watch my basic tutorials on aws where i have discussed about all those things in a playlist so i'll make sure to drop the link to that playlist in the description box okay so the next thing is database so where uh, you you can place this in another availability zone so in that way if one availability zone fails the other one will be there and you can you know spin up other virtual machines or ec2 instances and connect it back but there also there is some uh, risk or downtime involved so it is not recommended this also so and again if you are uh, you know hosting is the uh, host uh, you, if you are having two different availability zone if you want to make this application and web server speak with your database there will be an extra cost associated right so data transfer cost between the availability zone is also there you need to take care of that also so these are the things that you need to consider while running databases on ec2 then why do you think why should you run your you know databases on ec2 instances what is the reason right so there are some reasons when you want to run your databases on your ec2 instances so we will be going over that here so when you want your database to access the operating system so there are some databases that requires os level you know access in that situation you should go and run your database on your ec2 instance because in rds you don't get to see what is the operating system they are using or you don't get the access to uh, you know the os level there right so in that situation you can go ahead and run your e uh, databases on your ec2 instances but i have not seen uh, you know there is a requirement to you know for for your databases to use your operating system or to access operating system so they have removed all of them but uh, as people are moving towards cloud so they are also you know going and using on the uh, in uh, database service that the cloud providers are providing so for example rds uh, it is one of the you know uh, good service that aws is providing so people are moving towards cloud to you make use of that also and the other one is advanced db option 
tuning so if you want to tune your databases in an advanced way so which is not possible in the rds you can do that when you run your databases on your ec2 instance right and so third thing is that some vendors will demand to run your databases on your ec2 instance itself so in that scenario please speak to your vendors and your customer try to understand why they need to run this uh, databases on ec2 instances because until and unless there is a need i would not recommend you to run your databases on your ec2 instance because we will be discussing about that in the next slide so don't do it until and unless there is a proper requirement okay so the fourth is, fourth thing is that if your aws is not supporting some database version then you need to go and run your databases on your ec2 instance if you want specific operating system or oh sorry database version that is not provided by aws then you can go ahead and run your database on ec2 so i have seen aws is updating themselves so they will be you know providing all the databases version but if in case they do not provide any sort of version you can go ahead and host your databases on your ec2 instance okay so the last thing is if you need any specific version of operating system and the databases that aws doesn't provide you can go ahead and run your databases on ec2 okay so these are the reasons why you should run databases on your ec2 instances N next if you ask me why shouldn't you run databases on e ec2 these are the reason right so there is a lot to manage there so you have to manage your patching you have to manage your operating system upgrade all those things you will have to manage and there is a lot for the admin team so it will be an admin overhead okay so the second point would be backup and disaster recovery so if you are storing numerous amount of data on your uh, you know databases that will be really hectic to take the backup and the re uh, disaster recovery so if your organization is having disaster recovery that is you know uh, completely you know i i won't say it is completely impossible but uh, it is really difficult to establish this one right so you need to tune everything you need to take care of everything the disaster recovery uh, you know that is a complete uh, different story but it is really difficult to achieve it and one important thing is that ec2 is running in a single availability zone that means if that availability zone goes down the entire application the web server and your databases everything will be gone so all the data that you stored everything will be gone so that is one reason why you shouldn't run databases on your ec2 instance and so the next point is aws is spending a lot on their r d team so to develop new develop new features and products for their customers so if you do not make use of those products and uh, features then you would be missing out a lot because aws you know they are upgrading themselves from you know past uh, couple of you know years they are spending a lot on the r d so they have come up with beautiful products like rds as one such product so where you can directly go and you know spin up your uh, you know instance database instance then you can host multiple um, databases on your rds instance and make use of that that option is available but if that option is available why aren't you making use of that right so you need to think about that so you will miss out a lot uh, uh, if you don't use it in a right way right the other one is skills and setup time to monitor so you you need to uh, you know upgrade yourself that that is there so if you want to run your uh, database on your ec2 you need to have strong linux knowledge and your operating system level knowledge we can understand that that we can learn but you need to monitor your ec2 instance 24 bar 7 right so if something happens to your ec2 instance you need to troubleshoot so you need to make sure a security group uh, network access control list all those things should be correct and you uh, you know you need to give fine grained access to all all the people in the organization so those things you need to take care and that requires 24 7 support team to look after 
right so that is one of the uh, disadvantage i would say so the next thing is performance will be slower than aws options so if you go with aws specific options the performance will be slightly higher compared to running your databases on your ec2 instance okay so these are all the reasons why you shouldn't run your databases on your ec2 instance next up it is time for demo so i will go to my aws console and see how to host your databases on your ec2 instances okay so you might ask why are we doing this in uh, rds master class so there is a reason to it because if you know how to host databases on your uh, ec2 instance then you will understand the pain in uh, you know installing the databases configuring it everything that will take time and how much time it will save you when you go to rds that those things you will understand and we'll also try to migrate the database that we create in this demo to our rds instance that will be a great lesson to learn so watch out for that i will see you in the aws console so before going over the demonstration so if you have not subscribed to the channel please consider subscribing and share it among your friends okay so next let us go forward with the demonstration so our demonstration is about hosting your mariadb database on your ec2 instances so how to you know deploy your mariadb database on your ec2 instance so for this one what i have done is i have already created an ec2 instance so i have not installed anything we will be doing that right now so if you see this is the public ip address this is the private ip these 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 are all the important things that you need to know so this is just a summary of my ec2 instance so if you want to see the security group let me open that in the new tab so these are the uh, you know inbound traffic that i'm allowing for this particular ec2 instance now let us start let us start installing our uh, you know dependencies or our plugins whatever we need to host mariadb database on this particular ec2 instance okay for that i will log in through either ec2 instance connect or by using any of the third party uh, connectors like uh, you know uh, putty or mobile extreme okay so we'll be using that and uh, uh, we'll see you after i log in all right so now if you see i have logged in to my ec2 instance so this is my ec2 instance and this is a corresponding ip address private ip if you want to go ahead and verify so it ends with 89130 so let us go to my uh, ec2 instance if you see 89130 so this is the instance that i am currently logged in so whatever the commands that are required to you know uh, install and set environments everything i've documented in my github repo so i will make sure to drop this uh, link in the description so you can also make use of them these are just basic commands like uh, uh, you know becoming a super user installing mariadb server like that right so i'm not uh, you know going in depth about these commands but you know i will as and when uh, we progress in the class i will be explaining this now let us start you know uh, installing the database on our ec2 instance so let me go back to my ec2 so this is my ec2 let me minimize this screen and i'll get all my commands from this page okay so first let us begin the configuration i'll become a super user first let me copy all of them at the same time and run it once okay so i'll just copy paste everything so yeah it is downloading so till it's get downloaded let me explain what i'm doing first i'm becoming a super user okay so next i'm installing mariadb server and also installing wget okay so next i am enabling mariadb that i have recently downloaded and i am starting that mariadb server okay later on if there is any update i'm just using yum update to update that okay so this is the installation part of our uh, uh, you know server uh, mariadb server so now i am updating it it says no update no packages for updation so 
the next thing is to set environment variables so i will use environment variables as and when uh, i require so to set up this ec2 instance right so to set up this database so we need database name we need database password we need db root password db user so these things i require so instead of hard coding it everywhere what i thought is i would uh, you know set environment variables and i will make use of those in my uh, you know uh, database setup uh, when i run that right so this will get all the details from your uh, you know environment uh, uh, variables and it will configure it so basically the name of the database i'm using is ec2 db password admin 123456 root password this one user ec2 db user so in production environment it is not recommended to use this uh, names okay for demonstration i'm just going with this one okay so but for production and all so please don't use this kind of password or username okay so now let me copy this entire thing so let me set all the environment variables but before that let me clear the screen for you so now let me paste all of this these are the things that we have so let me paste all of them and hit enter now all my environment variables are set so i need not hard code anything so let me clear the screen again now let us configure our ec2 instance or a database on your ec2 instance so first let me create a new database name so uh, i mean the new database so what is the database i'm using ec2 user if you see i'm using dollar and i'm uh, getting the data from db name so db name contains this one ec2 db so that is the database name that i'm using and i'm storing all this information into one setup file that i've uh, created that setup file is db.setup in in case if i want to use it later i will use it okay so that is why if you see this uh, you know arrow mark and i'm storing all the details inside this db.setup okay so let me run this one by one or i can also run all of them at the same time okay next the second one is to create user uh, the name uh, i'm fetching it from db user so db user has ec2 db user so i'm getting the data from here this uh, particular uh, environment variable and the password it ha it has got a password so db password and that is being also stored into db dot setup okay similarly i will grant privileges for that user by using this query these are just simple um, queries so later on i will flush all my privileges later on i will you know use my sql admin so this also uses uh, sql uh, queries to uh, run queries um, it is also a kind of uh, structured query language i mean the maria db uses structured qu query language again so here i am just using my sql hyphen u the root um, you know and providing the password and uh, later on i am dumping all the details that i had in you know temp.db.setup into this particular thing and and later on i will remove this right so after the setup is done i'm going to remove this you can you know you no need of doing these things but you can also try in other way but this is how i follow uh, when i want to set up any databases or anything okay so it depends on you uh, you can this is just a configuration of your database on your ec2 right so let me do that for you i'll paste all the information and click on okay so it will do it and after that it will ask you whether you want to remove this temp db setup yes i'm deleting it i typed yes and it deleted right so now let me clear the screen so what did what did we do we just uh, set up our database on ec2 instance so next let us go ahead and add some dummy data inside this database right so let us go ahead and add uh, some data into this particular database that we just uh, downloaded so why do we need this data and all i will explain later right so we are, we are also plan we are also planning to migrate this particular database on your ec2 instance to your rds instance that we we will be creating later on after discussing the theory about our rds right so till then wait for it let us go ahead and add some dummy data to our database inside the ec2 instance 
so for that you need to run these queries so if you see i'm using mysql hyphen u root and the password and what where it is getting the password from db root password so what i'm trying to do is i'm just logging in to mysql that is uh, you know uh, the database that we downloaded and later on i will be using ec2 db that we just created so that is the database that we just created right inside that we will create a table with the name table 1 and i will add some details into that in terms of integers and var char okay so then i will insert all those details into table 1 so these are the values that i am adding 1 virat 2 sachin 3 dhoni 4 abd so like this i am going to add and later on we can see what if the data has been added to that particular table or not right so let us execute this command so let me copy this one and again i will paste it let's see if this works i don't know if it works so if you see uh, first it ran mysql hyphen u root password it is getting uh, the password from the environment variable so after that running that it uh, you know entered to mariadb it established the connection with mariadb so after that the first uh, query that I ran is to use this particular database and the query result was successful it says okay next I added insert table so this is the table that I'm inserting so before that I'm creating a table here so that also resulted query okay that means it uh, you know got created without any errors later on I'm inserting some data into that table now let us see uh, so it says query okay again now let us see if the data is available inside that uh, table so the command or query is select star from table 1 so this is going to show whatever the data that is being stored in table 1 right so let me hit enter and see what data we have so if you see the data is so i have uh, one column with id and other one with name it is you know uh, having the details that we stored like uh, one is virat kohli two uh, you know sachin three dhoni four abd like that so we have four different rows so what we have done is we have added some dummy values in into our table that we just created so this is how you install a database on your ec2 instance configure it and then uh, you know add some data or records into your databases so it took too much time for us but i've explained step by step how to do uh, how to implement this one right so this is how you do it after understanding how to host your mariadb database on your ec2 instance now let us understand what is rds relational database service so this is a uh, service that is being offered by aws and this is a database as a service dvaas so we cannot consider this as a database as a service it is more of a database server as a service but people always call this as database as a service so we also go with a database as a service but so what is database as a service aws is providing you database as one of the service to you so it is completely managed you don't need to take care of anything everything comes managed for you so you just have to create database on on the rds instances and start integrating with your application or your websites right so it is a managed database instance for one or more databases you can host one or more databases on the rds instance okay so what are the databases that are supported so the rds supports mysql mariadb postgresql oracle and microsoft sql so it also supports one of uh, the proprietary uh, database that is developed by uh, aws that is uh, amazon aurora so it, this is so different from you know normal rds so it is a separate product so i will be explaining it in another master class you can expect that in the coming weeks so this week we will be concentrating only about our relational databases and other databases except uh, aurora okay so these are the databases that are currently being supported by your rds relational database service 
now let's talk about rds database instance so basically database will have a connection with your c name so that is canonical name that is what you need to use when you are trying to access your rds instance so do not worry about this so i will show you how to connect to your rds instance and everything but till then you know please bear with me so i will have to go through all of this and only then i will go for the demonstration so rds uses standard database engines okay so the database can be optimized for your uh, db.m5 general db.r5 memory and db.3 uh, t3 for burst so if you are uh, going for a general usage go with uh, db.m5 if you are uh, going with a uh, memory optimized so if you are if you want uh, more memory so then you go with uh, db.r5 which is memory optimized and burst optimized it is db.3 uh, t3 okay so when you provision an instance you provision storage that is dedicated to that particular instance and that storage is ebs storage located in the same availability zone where your rds is located right so rds is vulnerable to failures in that particular availability zone for example if the ebs volume fails or if it is not working as expected then rds will also fail to operate right so uh, the storage that you select uh, the ebs volume that you select it can be you know um, ssd or magnetic so depending on your use case you can go ahead and select it so i'm just giving you an high level overview of rds after the demonstration of rds you will be more clear on what is rds we will be uh, looking into some of the details about rds uh, in detail okay so don't worry this is just an overview of rds okay and billing is per instance that means you will be paying per instance and hourly rate for the compute so rds will comes with instance and also storage so this is billing for uh, instance will be you know hourly basis you are billed so for storage you, you are billed for storage allocated so how much ever storage that you are consuming you will be paying for that particular storage so this is just an overview of your rds so rds and rds instance so now let us head over to our aws console and see how we can create an rds database instance and then we'll all, we'll see how what are the different options that we have what are the uh, things that we uh, uh, that are required before creating rds instance all those things we will see in the console so before going with the demonstration so if you have not subscribed to the channel please consider subscribing and share it among your friends now let us head over to our aws console and start creating our rds instance okay so this is my aws console so this is the management console of aws so if you want to work on rds you can either go and search for rds in the search bar and open this rds in the new tab so let me do that let me open rds in the new tab so this is my rds management console so right now if you see i have zero out of 40 instances running so maximum you can create 40 database instances in this account that you are seeing right now i have zero okay so this is how the um, management console of your uh, rds will look okay so now let us go uh, step by step so we will we will need uh, some of the things that needs to be configured before even creating your rds database okay so first things first we need to create a subnet group so subnet group as in this is where your rds will be created so if you we are just going to specify what are the subnets which can rds use to deploy rds instance okay so let's go ahead and click on subnets here if you see right now i don't have any subnet groups right so let me go over and uh, create a db subnet group okay so let me click on create uh, subnet you need to give a proper name so let me give demo so let me give demo rds okay so uh, description also i'm going to copy the same and paste it here 
VPC. So if you have your custom VPC, you can create it uh, in a custom VPC. But if you do not have one, you can create it in a default VPC as well. So by default, if you see in my account, this is the only VPC that I have. So I will select the same thing. Next is availability zone that will include your subnets, right? So whatever the subnets that you want to add that will be inside your availability zone. So you need to select your availability zone first. So let me go ahead and select only A, B and C. So in my region, North Virgin era, so we have six availability zones, but I only want three first three availability zones. So I will select all of them. If you see that is getting appeared here right so after selecting the availability zone it will automatically appear whatever the subnets you have inside that availability zone that will be displayed here right now if you see these are the subnets that i have so i will select uh, in 1c 1b and 1a so these are the subnets that i have and it will appear here okay after uh, if you are okay with all these details you can go ahead and click on create so this will create your subnet group now we need to go ahead and create our rds instance database itself okay so to do that in the left hand side you see something called as databases go over there and if you see right now i do not have any databases so let us start creating one so let me click on create database so uh, this will ask you to choose a database creation method so whether you want to go ahead and create using a standard one or if you want to go with easy create so basically if you go with easy create it will use a recommended best practice configurations provided by aws and it will e easily configure all the databases but i just want you to go through all the things that are required while creating a database because in production or in real time we will be going with standard create we will not be using easy create okay so i'll select a standard create and as I have shown you how to create MariaDB database on EC2 instance, so let us also create the same a similar uh, MariaDB database on RDS itself. Okay, so let me select RDS. So you have different options. If you see, we have Aurora, we will be having a separate masterclass on Aurora database. So don't worry about that. It supports MySQL, it supports uh, PostgreSQL, Oracle database, and it also supports microsoft sql server right so right now i'll go with mariadb and the corresponding versions of the database that you select will be appearing here if you see it is automatically selecting the latest version of the database but if you want to if you want to use the specific version you can go ahead and do that so let me go ahead with the latest one okay so templates it is very important you need to choose the sample template to meet your use case basically if you are trying to deploy it in production go ahead and select production so if you are just testing out in your environment if you are uh, trying to you know onboard rds as a service to your organization go ahead and test it first for testing go ahead and use dev or test but if you are using free tier account i would highly recommend you to go ahead and select free tier because this will cost a lot rds is one of the you know costless service so i would uh, recommend you to go ahead and use a free tier so costless as in uh, you know you will be paying only for whatever you are using but what i am trying to say is if you go ahead and select production and if you do not delete the rds database later on you will be billed for that so you, you will incur a lot of cost so that is the reason why i'm asking you to go with free tier okay so we need to provide some settings here so we need to provide the database identifier so that means uh, you know a type of name for your database instance so it needs to understand right so it is asking for a database identifier so let me say demo uh, rds database okay so i'll just give this one so this is just a meaningful name okay so our demo rds database so the, the second thing is it is asking for master username and password and other things so i'll just say rds user 
rds user all small letters and password i will use uh, the same password that i used in uh, my uh, ec2 so that is admin 12345 so i don't want to remember too many passwords so i am going to use the same passwords here okay so i'm using the same password let me confirm the same password here okay so you need to you know provide uh, at least eight uh, you know ascii characters read those information before providing your password okay so it is asking for uh, database instance class so whether you want to go with standard that means uh, m m series m class memory optimized which includes r and x classes burstable classes uh, which includes t classes we discussed about this in our uh, theory part also if you see database can be optimized for db.m5 that is for standard so this is for memory and this is for burst use case t3 right so that is what we are also seeing here if you want to go ahead and change it by default you will get two vcpus and one gigs of ram but if you want to change it you go ahead and do that i'll just go with one vcpu and one gigs of ram right so i don't want uh, any optimization there so i'll just uh, go with one vcpu and one gigs of ram storage type so as i already told you it is going to use your uh, ebs volume so it is asking which type of storage type you want to use whether you want to go and use gp2 or iops or io or magnetic so it is recommended to use gp2 so but if you are going with uh, iops provisioning only then select um, you know provisioned iops i have not seen people using uh, magnetic even while testing it out but if you want to try that you can go ahead and, and do that as well but right now i am going with general purpose ssd 2 okay allocated storage by default it will give you 20 gigs of uh, memory maximum you can use is uh, 6144 gigs okay so that is the maximum um, storage in gigabytes that you can get okay the second uh, thing is storage auto scaling so if you want uh, you know it provides dynamic scaling support for your database storage based on your application needs so if you want to enable that you can do it this comes with extra cost so uh, don't try to use it when you are testing it out so uh, as we are just testing i'll just uncheck this one but if you want to use it you can go ahead and do that okay so the next thing is availability and durability so we have an option called multi az deployment i will be speaking about uh, multi az deployment in the coming lecture so uh, please uh, wait until that okay so right now i'm not going with any of this connectivity so it is asking uh, you know whether you want to connect your to your ec2 instance if whether you want to directly connect to your ec2 instance or if you don't want you can select don't connect to ec2 instance okay so in the similar type uh, you have uh, you know uh, network type so whether uh, uh, you know you want to use a dual stack mode make sure to use uh, your ipv6 also if you select uh, dual stack it will also uh, allocate ipv6 address as well so if your organization is already making use of uh, ipv6 you can select this one but right now i'm okay with ipv6 and virtual private cloud that is vpc so choose the vpc that you want uh, the vpc defines the virtual networking uh, environment for your database instance so select the one that you want right now i only have this uh, you know default vpc i will select the same thing but if you want to create new you will have the option to do it here itself right so i would not do that if you ask me i will go ahead and create my vpc first and then i will be uh, creating this rds okay so that is one thing next is subnet group if you remember the very first thing that we did is to create the database subnet group so we created a subnet group with the name demo rds so the database subnet group defines which subnet and ip ranges of the database instance can use in the vpc that you selected right so basically we selected three uh, uh, you know subnets that is uh, us east 1a 1b and 1c right so those things you can select here and public access whether you want this rds database to be publicly accessible or you don't want to do that you select 
no so if you want you can select yes okay so next is vpc security group so it is just a virtual firewall so it um, basically vpc security group to use you use that to allow access to your databases so make sure that security group allows appropriate incoming traffic so if you don't allow appropriate traffic inside the database the you will not be able to access your databases so you need to make sure that you are allowing port um, the uh, mysql or your maria db port should be open i think that is 3306 port needs to be open so i have already created us uh, you know um, vpc security group with the name linux sg so if you remember while creating ec2 instance also i selected um, the same vpc uh, security group select the same thing so i think yeah that got selected here if you want uh, to place this rds instance into a specific availability zone you can you know give that but if you go ahead and give no preference uh, the um, you know uh, aws will take their choice on where to place this rds instance so if you expand additional configuration so if you see this is the database port so this is 3389 if you want to change it you can do it okay so if you want to use a specific port you can do that in the advanced co configuration so database authentication right now we are going with uh, password authentication so but uh, if you want to access this database inside an ec2 instance you can create an im role and access it but right now we will go with uh, password authentication so that is what uh, we gave there right so i'll select password authentication so if you want to monitor this rds you can enable this one so basically how it is working so how different processor or threads are using your cpu utilization memory metrics all those things you can monitor so just like we have uh, detailed monitoring in ec2 instance we also have enhanced monitoring in terms of rds if you want you can go ahead and uh, enable that also this will come with extra cost okay so i am not going to do that let us expand additional configuration so here if you see it is asking so if you want to create a database before you, uh, when the setup is happening when when the instance is getting created if you want to create an initial database you can do that right so if you want to specify the initial database name for example rds uh, db let's say rds db so while this rds instance is getting created it will also create this particular database okay so i will select that one if if you want you can enable automated backups so a parameter group is getting created so by default uh, this is the maria db version that is getting created there and backup as i already told it is uh, it will create a point in time snapshot for your database if you want you can enable that one and you can provide the retention period so if you enable this one and the retention period is set to seven days what happens it will you know capture or it will take a snapshot of your database and it will retain that snapshot for seven days so that is one thing uh, you get an option in rds so if you want to go ahead with that you can do that or else you can disable that also i'll go i'm going to disable that so again uh, maintenance is there you can specify the window for your maintenance so if you want auto um, you know minor version upgrade to your databases if you enable this one automatically if there is any version upgrade on your uh, minor version upgrades will be taken care by the aws itself so if you go ahead with that you can choose a window for example if you want that to happen on every monday or uh, you can specify whatever the day you want and start time and what is the duration that you can provide for the maintenance you can go ahead with that if you go with no preference they will select a, a window for you and they will perform maintenance activity for yourself okay so if you want you can enable that one if you don't want you can uncheck that box okay so deletion protection so if you want uh, uh, protect if you want to protect the database from being deleted accidentally uh, so you can enable this one if you enable this one you cannot delete the database 
okay so that is one option you will get it but uh, you know make sure that uh, you know while practicing do not enable it uh, until and unless uh, you know you have to try working on this one next uh, it will display the estimated monthly cost what will be what will be your uh, monthly cost uh, so uh, this is my free tier account so i can run uh, for you know some duration uh, the rds instance for free in my account so that is what you are seeing here so all the things will be displayed here in the estimated monthly cost so after viewing all of this you can click on create database so this will start your uh, you know database creation so if you see this is what the database uh, name that we gave identifier and if you see we are uh, running MariaDB engine on this one and we selected t2.micro so the status is still creating so it will take some uh, time to create this database so i will come back when the status is okay or it is uh, available for us right so i will come back if you see now the data database that we just created has been successfully cre created it took quite a bit of time for my database to be created okay so if you see this is the identifier and the status is also available so let us see uh, what are the details that we have for this particular database okay so this is the database endpoint i told you that uh, you will be able to connect to this database using your uh, database endpoint so this is my database endpoint so every instance database instance will have its own endpoint so please make a note of it and this is not going to change so in case of um, you know ec2 instance what happen what used to happen is when you uh, provide when you have the ip addresses if you stop and restart or uh, you, you know if you create a new ec2 instances or if uh, you know if you modify something on that instance i mean if you change the state of an instance what used to happen the ip address of that instance used to get changed but here in this case even if you stop and restart this endpoint will be same okay and this is our port 3306 is this is the default port and this is our vpc and this is our uh, you know subnet group that we created these are the subnets we added and uh, this is my uh, vpc security group right so it was created just now and if you see the replication all these things are uh, you know we configured everything is here if you go over here monitoring so we did not select um, you know detailed monitoring so uh, even if you do not select detailed monitoring you will get the cpu utilization details what is the current state what is the free space available what is the iops read write iops free memory all these things you will get under monitoring section so logs and events basically let me close this one so this will write all the logs um, you know for your uh, uh, instance a database instance that you created so what happened behind the scenes all the logs will be here under logs and events next the configuration whatever the configuration that you selected everything will be here so uh, this is our database instance id and this is our database class we selected t2.micro and um, if you see this is the ram this is a vcpu engine version and this is the initial database that we created rds db so we spoke about that also right the storage is 20 gb all these things you will get it under um, your configuration section here okay so you will get to see all of this in in here okay next is maintenance and backup so we will be seeing about this uh, in the uh, next classes as uh, i did not uh, you know go with automated backups i disabled it one so that is what it is showing here uh, you know snapshots it will be here so if you want you can take a snapshot and that snapshot will be appearing here okay tags if you added any tags it will be appearing here okay so these are the details about your um, you know uh, rds instance how to create rds instance and what are the details that you need to know okay so uh, i hope you understand how to create um, rds instance in detail okay all right so we understood 
how to create a RDS database instance in the RDS console. So the next step would be to migrate your existing databases from your EC2 instance to your RDS. So if you remember previously we created an EC2 instance on that EC2 instance we um, you know created one of the database and we added some data like Virat, Dhoni, Sachin, ABD all those details we, cre uh, we created a table and we added those details. So in this step in this lesson what we are doing is we are trying to migrate that database that we created on EC2 instance to your RDS right so how to do that in detail steps i'm going to explain it so everything is documented i will drop that uh, link to the github in the description you can check that out okay so the we are following four step here so step one would be to get the dump of your existing database on your ec2 instance so whatever the existing database you have on your ec2 instance just take a dump of uh, dump of it as in your uh, snapshot or your backup of that okay so next step would be to connect to your rds instance rds database instance that we previously created and then migrate the database dump that we created in the step one to your rds and let us verify if the data is already available so, so if you remember i initially created one of the rds database with with the name rds db and we did not create any table or any we did not added any data there so we will try to add the existing database from your ec2 instance to your rds database okay so finally we will verify if the data that we transferred it is available or not okay so let me see you in the console okay so this was the ec2 instance that we created and we added some data into this particular ec2 instance right so that is where i'm connected to so this is the ec2 instance 89.130 if you want to verify 89.130 so this is where our current database is located so the lesson commands are in this same uh, document that i've uh, used previously so this is where you can get all the uh, details here as well okay so let us uh, start from here so this is also done we already have uh, some data so if you want to see so what is the data that you have inside this database so let me run this uh, short query so you, you can also verify so if we have the data or not now i'm inside my mariadb so um, let me you know uh, use uh, this particular database so the database that we are using is um, uh, i think uh, ec2 db right so let me write that command here use ec2 db okay so i hope uh, i'm writing it correctly so yeah so right now i'm using ec2 db so let me paste uh, the command that used to see the table so whatever the table that we have inside that um, database you can visualize it by using select star from table one so let me see what is the data so if you see this is the data that we currently have so let us take a dump out of uh, a dump of this database and let us try to add that dump to our or let us try to migrate that dump to our rds instance okay so let me exit out of the uh, uh, you know maria db so let me clear my screen now so to do this to first step would be to take the dump of the existing database so how to do that so you need to run this query so our command mysql dump used to take the dump hyphen u uh, and uh, hyphen u represent what is the user so i am going to be a root user hyphen pre that will prompt you for your password so you need to enter your password and what is the password that we are using so this is the password we have already stored that also all right so what is the database so this is our database right ec2 db so that is what our uh, database is we will take that dump and the name of the dump that we are using is ec2db.sql so you need to you can give any name here ec2db but it should end with .sql right so that is one requirement so now let me uh, run this one let me quickly run this one so 
let me copy and paste it here if you see it is asking me for a password so the password that i used is this one right so this is the root password let me copy the root password so let me paste it here it will not be appearing you just after pasting it just click on enter so now if you see the dump is taken to your sql ec2.sql ec2db.sql so if you do not take a dump like this if you do not redirect it to a separate file what will happen it will display entire dump on your screen itself so that is not recommended so you can use a separate dot uh, sql file to dump all your details into dot uh, sql okay so now let me type in ls hyphen lrt so just to see if we have that dump if you see we have that particular dump here all right so we have done with our first thing that is to take the dump of our existing um, database now let us migrate this particular database so we have taken this uh, ec2.sql right so let us migrate it to our rds so for that you need to run this query or command so it is simple mysql hyphen h so host name so what is the host here you need to provide your rds endpoint so if you go back to rds so previously we discussed endpoint right you need to copy this endpoint and you need to make use of this endpoint right so that is what i've given here you need to replace this entire uh, thing with the rds endpoint hyphen p with the port number 3306 so this is what the port number is so please make sure you are allowing 338 3306 port on your uh, security group otherwise you will not be able to connect okay so hyphen u what is the username that you are um, you know what is the user that you are trying to log in as i am using it as rds user so that is the user that i created so if you remember and um, it will prompt me for a password so that is why i have given hyphen p what is the password that i used so if you remember i used the same password i told that i cannot remember many password so i went ahead and used the same password and this is rds db so i did not create any database i did not log i did not even log into my rds database then how did i get this rds db so that's a good question so if you see while we were creating the rds database itself if you remember i created one initial database called rds db so right now i'm in my rds aws rds console if you see i already have a database with the name rds db so that is what i'm trying to do here i am dumping this ec2 dot uh, ec2 db dot sql file that i uh, got from my dump so i'm you know placing that inside this rds db that we just created okay so let me copy this to a notepad i need to replace that uh, uh, placeholder there so let me open a notepad so let me paste it here i need to replace this one with the uh, endpoint so let me go back to my rds let me go to connectivity so here is where our endpoint is so copy this endpoint without any space or uh, hyphen and uh, place it here right so this is the command that we need to use so let me copy this entire command and paste it in my ec2 so if you see this is the command this is my rds connect uh, you know um, rds endpoint this is the port and this is what we are doing right let me hit enter so it will ask me for password so what is the password that i used so this is the password so admin one two three four five six so let me copy that and paste it here so hit enter done we just migrated our ec2.sql ec2db.sql file from our existing database to rds right so let us verify so if you remember i did not log into my rds i did not do anything inside this database i just created that database and i it was empty it was an empty database now what i did i migrated my um, database uh, i mean i migrated the database from ec2 instance to this rds so let us verify if we have uh, all the data that we had inside ec2 database okay so do to do that you need to 
connect to your RDS database. So the command to connect is this one. So you need you can use the same command, but you can stop right here. You need not specify any database name. If you stop here, that is fine. Okay, so let me copy it from here itself. It will be easy for me. I will copy till here. Okay, so let me paste that one. Again, it will prompt me for password. I can get my password back here in here so where I've stored so let me copy the same password and let me paste it here hit enter now if you see your prompt is telling that welcome to MariaDB monitor so this is your RDS database RDS instance right now I'm in my RDS database if you see I've used a host as demo RDS so this is the you know endpoint of your RDS instance right so you can use this command to um, you know access your RDS database inside your EC2 instance okay so now let us run uh, you know uh, what is what are the databases that we have so command or the query to uh, you know see all the databases that you have is show so databases I hope I'm uh, not making any typo here databases colon yeah right now if you see rds db sys and these are the default databases that um, mariadb creates on itself but this is the database that we created initially so this is where actually we dumped all our data inside so we need to check if we have all the data that we um, you know the dump that we had taken we uh, you know put that into this RDS DB. So let us verify if we have that data. So to use per this particular uh, uh, database, you need to qu uh, write a query, use RDS, RDS DB. If you type enter, now the database has been changed. Now you are trying to use RDS DB. So now let me run a query to see all the tables or uh, this is the table that we had in our uh, you know dump if we let us run this and see if we have the same table here let me clear my screen first so let me run this query see if you see this was the data that we had in my um, ec2 database right now that is being migrated to our rds instance also so this is how you can migrate the existing database on your ec2 instance to your mariadb database on your rds all right so so that's it for uh, this demonstration uh, i hope you uh, learned something so how to migrate the database to your rds so um, that is i uh, that is all i wanted to show you in this particular demonstration all right so now let us understand rds multi az that is high availability concept okay so this is an option that you can enable on RDS instances. Basically, the, if you use this option, what happens? So secondary hardware will be allocated inside another availability zone. Basically, so if you are creating one instance here, one um, database instance, if you go with multi AZ option, so a second copy, a standby replica of the same database will be created in another availability zone in the same region okay so this second uh, database instance that is getting created it is called as it is referred to as the standby replica or the standby replica instance okay so the standby replica has its own storage in the same availability zone at as it is located so for example let's say this is uh, the primary is in us east 1a so if the secondary or the standby replica is in 1b us east 1b then the storage unit so as we already know this rdb uh, rds instance will have their uh, ebs volume attached so this ebs volume will be in the same availability zone as of your standby instance all right so that is what um, we have so as you already know so rds databases can access only by using your canonical name or your endpoint so we saw that in the demo as well so this rds 
enables synchronous replication from the primary instance to your standby replica so that means you cannot access the standby replica for any reason via rds so standby replica is just used for extra capacity so what is the you know meaning of synchronous replication that is important and that is the key point here so the synchronous replication means database write or the write operations will take uh, will be will be occurring okay so the primary database instance commits the writes first so if you get the uh, primary i mean the changes or the write operations so that will be occurring in the primary database at the same time the write operation will be happening in your standby replication also so this is called as synchronous replication at the same time the re read or write uh, sorry write oper operation will be occurring at the same time in both primary and secondary replica or the standby replica so this concept is called as synchronous replication and this is really important with the multi az concept okay so the standby replica commits all your writes okay if in case any occurs in the primary database let's say if uh, if the the primary database is not working as expected so then aws will detect that will detect that the primary is not working fine and it will automatically fail over within 60 to 120 seconds that means one to two minutes to the new database so it will automatically fail over to the new database the window is very clear here 60 to 120 seconds okay and this is not providing fault tolerance anywhere so fault tolerant means the system should continue operating even if there is an uh, failure right but that is not happening here so there is some downtime there is um, one to two minutes of down downtime uh, and it takes time to get uh, the new instance to be created it will take some time so this is not providing you the fault tolerant so there will be some impact during the change okay so that is about rds multi az so now let us concentrate on some of the points that we need to remember when it comes to your um, rds okay so the first one um, would be to multi az feature is not at all free so this comes with the extra infrastructure cost because we are creating standby instance right so even if you are not allowed to use standby but that is still there so you are going to pay twice as much as the cost that uh, you pay for only single db instance right so that is one point so the standby replica cannot be accessed directly until and unless a failure occurs so that means you cannot be you know this cannot be used the secondary or the standby cannot be used for scaling it it's an availability improvement not a performance you cannot use that to improve your performance that is important so failover is highly available not fault tolerant so this is not fault tolerant that means there is some downtime right we spoke about that so this occurs in the same region so all the things that are happening it is in the same region so if the region goes down then the entire thing will be down okay so this offers this multi az concept offers only high availability and minimizes disruptions associated with the software updates backups and instance type changes so for example changes not performance um, you know uh, whatever the changes that you had so that will um, you know help you in this scenario and this is not a performance improvement or scalability it is just you know a fault it is just for your high availability so um, that is one important thing so here backups are taken from standby which removes performance impact that means so if you take the backup from the primary so backup in itself will consume some uh, unit of cpu and some memory right so what aws is doing if you go with multi az and if you take the backup so the backup will be taken from your standby 
that means so you will have the same copy of data even in the standby also right so because it is synchronous in process that means whatever the data that is there in primary exactly the same will be there in the standby also so it is better to take the backup from your standby instance so that is what they are doing to improve the performance okay so failover can happen for a number of reason so it can be a full az outage so availability zone is completely out so then it will have um, you can see the failover so if the primary rds is not working it, if it is having some failure then the failover will happen so if you want to test failover you can do it manually you can you know um, you know test the manual failover and the other thing is if you change the type of an rds instance it will change as part of changing that type right so if all the things that you change here in primary that should be replicated in secondary so if you change the instance type so that that will be changed to your uh, the standby also and that will have failover to occur okay so that is about your multi az concept in rds okay so next we are going to discuss about rds backup and restores so before speaking about that we need to talk about some important terminologies one is rpo and the other one is rto so rpo means recovery point objective rto means recovery time objective so what is rpo so it is the time between the last backup and when the failure occurred so let's say we are taking automated snapshots exactly at 6 am in the morning and let's assume that uh, the failover happened or the failure happened at 7 am in the morning so the time difference between your last backup and your failure so that is one hour right so from 6 am to 7 am that duration is called as recovery point objective so so maximum what amount of data that you are going to lose that is called as recovery point objective so the maximum amount of amount of data that you are going to lose is one hour of data right so whatever the data that was um, written to your database from the last one hour uh, considering 6 a.m to 7 a.m so that data will be lost so this influences technical solution and your cost also so business usually provides an rpo value so they will be providing what will be your rpo recovery point objective they were, they are going to provide that you need to stick to your architecture pra best practices so the second key terminology is rto that is recovery time objective it is time between the disaster recovery event and full recovery so it is just a time difference between your disaster recovery event and the full recovery so let's say so uh, the disaster occurred at 7 am and you took 30 minutes to fully recover fully recover whatever the uh, you know disaster app happened so you took 30 minutes to restore all the databases so from 7 to 7 30 you worked on it and you took the uh, took all the things back to the working state so that 30 minutes duration from 7 to 7 30 whatever the time that you spend to recover the you know uh, database that time is called recovery time objective and this is also also influenced by the process staff your technical staff and the documentation that you have right so these are the things that we need to understand before even understanding your rds backups so now let us go ahead and see what are rds backups so one key important thing is that the very first snapshot that rds will take will be full copy of the data used on your rds value right so from then on the snapshots will be incremental and only store the change in the data for example first time when you launch the rds it will take a snapshot so that snapshot will be the full copy of the data that is already there in rds volume but then on if you you know take uh, if you go and take another snapshot what it will do it will identify what are the changes that was done to the data and only those incremental changes will be copied will be uh, taken as a snapshot right so that is one important so when any snapshot occurs 
there is a brief interruption to the flow of data between the compute resources and the storage so if you are using single az this can impact your application so if you are using multi az the snapshot occurs on the standby replica so we spoke about that when we were speaking about the multi az concept right so if you are only going with a single az then what happens the snapshot will take some time and there will be a, some interruption to the flow of data so you need to bear with that so instead if you go with multi az what happens the snapshot or the backup will be taken on your standby so that is the the standby database you are not at all using it so if we take the backup of from that standby it will be still more secure because it will there will be no interruption right so the next concept is manual snapshot uh, don't expire at all so you have to clean them yourself so if you take any manual snapshot you will have to clean the snapshot on yourself and that snapshot will not be removed automatically so automatic snapshots can be configured to remove so if you specify your uh, retention time it will be retained for so much time and after that it will be remote but if you go with a manual snapshot they don't expire you will have to delete it manually so uh, in addition to automated backup every 5 minutes database uh, transaction logs are stored to your s3 buckets and this transaction logs uh, store the actual data which changes in, inside the database so the actual operation that are executed all those things will be stored okay so this allows a database to be restored at a point in time often with the 5 minute granularity okay so automatic cleanups can be anywhere from 0 to 35 days so the window is 0 to 35 days that means you can restore at any point in that particular time frame so this will use both the snapshots and the transaction logs so when you delete the database they can be retained but they will expire based on their retention period okay so that is one important thing so the only way to maintain backup is to create a final snapshot so which will not expire automatically so that you can do it manually as well okay so now let us see some of the points to remember uh, regarding our backup so when performing a restore RDS creates a new RDS instance with a new endpoint address. So if you are you know using this endpoint address in application, you need to make sure to use the new endpoint address that was newly created. Okay? So when restoring a manual snapshot, okay? So you are setting it to a single point in time. This influences the RPO value, the recovery point objective value. So automated backups are different. they allow any 5 minute point in time so point in time so um, those will take point in time recovery for you know every 5 minutes backups are restored and transaction logs are replayed to bring the database to the desired point in time okay so restores aren't fast so it will take some time because if you already know about the concept of rto then you will understand the uh, what is the recovery time objective right so time taken to restore the database so it is not fast at all so it will take some time so these are the points to remember next let us talk about rds read replicas and this is the last concept that we are going to speak and this is important as well okay so read replicas so keep this in mind read replicas are asynchronous in nature that means it is written fully the data that is uh, newly uh, you know you if you receive the new data that needs to be written so it will be fully written first to your primary and then to your stand standby instance okay so once it is stored on disk it will then be pushed to your replica so the standard replica it will get the data only after the primary uh, the instance will get the data okay so this can be created in the same region or in the different region as well so so if you create this in a different region we call that as um, cross region replication you can do that okay and one more important thing is that aws handles all of the encryption 
configuration and networking without any intervention so you don't have to do anything aws will take everything on themselves okay so uh, the thing is we need to discuss about the rds read replicas performance so wh what uh, so why does this matter right so why does read replicas um, matter so it improves your performance so you can create five read replicas per db instance if you have a one db instance you can create five read replicas for the same database instance each of each of these provides an additional instance of read performance so this allow you to scale out read operation for an instance for example if someone is trying to access this or uh, this particular rds to read some data you can redirect them to your rds read replicas so that it will not impact your or it will not interrupt your write operation so if you do write and read at the same time it will impact your uh, your your iops so instead of that what you can do you can if the if you are getting read operation you can redirect them to your rds read replicas okay so this can provide global performance improvements and uh, provides global resilience by using cross region replication so i told that you can uh, put this in cross region and they don't improve your rto so it is it has got uh, nothing to do with your rto re recovery time objective so we spoke about that um, in the uh, other uh, slide so um, so this snapshots and backups Im improve your uh, recovery point objective so the time difference between your last backup and the occurrence of your uh, failure so whereas your uh, you know um, this um, read replicas don't uh, impact so or don't improve any type of uh, rdo so that is one key thing here okay so i think uh, we have concluded we have covered most of the topics that that will come under your uh, rds so i've tried to cover most of them if there is anything that i've left so i'll be making a separate video on that because this video is taking a long as um, i did not expect this to be so so long um, as the concept is more i thought of doing it as a master class but if there is anything that i need to speak i will be doing a separate video on them and i will be uploading to my channel so that's it for this master class i hope you learned anything and everything related to your um, aws uh, relational database as a service so if you have not subscribed to the channel subscribe to the channel and share it among your friends thank you see you in the next weekend